Do you feel like there's not enough content? Do you feel like you've done your dailies and you don't know what to do next? I've seen in chat multiple times that there's really not much to do after your dailies, which is your missions, your raids, path of growths, expeditions, PvP. I've even heard of people making a second account, which I don't honestly think you really need to do. There is so much more to the game that a lot of people really don't understand, or they just haven't looked into it. That's what today's video is going to be about, what to do after your dailies have been completed. If you like my videos and like all my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy ding, oh Jesus, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go baby. Tip of the day, this revolves around cooking. I've been saving cooking for last because all the recipes are on the internet. It's really easy to do. However, if you don't want to go out and gather all the materials for cooking, which is kind of related to this video, you really don't have to. If you go into the guild shop, click on the ingredients tab and every single level of cooking, each level has a specific box you can buy from the guild shop. I would only do this after you get your sky stones and your cobalt pieces but it's a one-time purchase on the account and you can buy the level that you need just with guild coins and it makes cooking promotion so much easier. The more you know. All right, so you're done all your daily missions. You've done all your Kairos dungeons, all your Path of Groves, your expeditions, party dungeons, battlefield, arena, brawl arena, repeat requests, all your raid supports. You've done everything you can and it's only 1 p.m. I'm gonna tell you what else you can do to help you progress a little bit. And to make some money first and foremost if you're looking for something to do go to your other summoners and do their main quest and area explorations there is a lot of rewards you can obtain from doing all of their quests it's also not a bad idea to have all three summoners level there are better situations for each individual summoner make sure to take advantage of that next whenever you're busy and you're away from your keyboard or your phone make sure to be farming something whether that's afk fishing or just creature book farming every single monster every single fish they all give you rewards also with the creature book it's a good place to farm gold as well if you really have already maxed out the whole creature book if you go to any of the five star monsters they drop runes and it's runes you do not need anymore so you can literally just farm the runes and sell them for gold next level up your professions i've talked about this before Professions are very key. Make sure to do processing first, then get into at least level six alchemy. Push blacksmithing so you can upgrade your weapons. Level up cooking. Cooking's very easy to level up, which I showed you in the tip of the day. And then you get into master rank, which master rank is just a completely different grind. Field events. This might be silly to some of you, but I actually set an alarm on my phone five minutes before every event time. These are extra rewards you don't want to miss out on not to mention materials for outfits raheel coins scrolls skill books and a chance to get a mount that will never probably drop and not to mention if you're leveling up your other summoners you can use them on the field events as well say you've done the fishing event on orbia she cannot do the fishing event for the rest of the day however you can get on your other summoner and you will be able to do that same event chest and pot farming if you go into every single region you can get blue keys lock shards and gold from doing this and if you're really efficient with it you can probably get around roughly averaging 100,000 gold every hour. Every single area map has different amount of regions in it. They are identified by the orange writing. Those are the main hub towns. For example, Rukarangma has four different areas that you can go to. I'm going to click on Ranite Canyon. There's three places to teleport to. I'm going to teleport to the one. It costs zero gold. And you just want to look around for pots and see if you can get some pots, which drop a decent amount of gold accumulative over however many pots you kill. The gold amount is random. Once you've teleported to this area and killed the pots here, you can then click on the top left mini map, go to the next teleport location and teleport there immediately. And 
look, there's more pots here, so you kill these pots and get more gold. And you get blue keys as well. You then teleport to the next one, look to see if there's any pots here, and there are. Go ahead and hit these up and get more gold. So it only takes 10 seconds. It seems small in every single place, but if you're doing this non-stop for about an hour, it's a pretty decent amount of gold. It's boring, yeah, but with the gold income that we have in the game currently, it's not a bad idea if you're bored. You can just teleport to each area in each map and just do the pots. However, if you're looking for lock shards, which lock shards are needed for outfits, and they're also needed for the props for sale and processing to craft the secondary item to get more gold, then what you can do is go around the map and look for chests. And you don't have to be too crazy looking for chests because they pop up on the mini map. You could be looking for chests while you're looking for different mining nodes, which I'll talk about in a minute. Hell, I'm sure there's probably even some kind of document or guide showing where every single chest is. But as you can see, they just pop up on the, on the mini map. It's easy. Just place yourself in a decent area on the map so that you get an area wide view of where a chest would be. Next is farming materials. This could be for yourself for blacksmithing or cooking or alchemy, whatever the case is. Now you might say, hey, I'm not trying to play like Minecraft and just craft all day and gather materials. This isn't really just about that. Gathering materials in your spare time leads to a multitude of different things. If you're not farming materials for yourself, then what you can do is play the exchange center. The exchange center is super valuable. Yesterday, I had 4,500 crystals. Today, I have 11,000. And the way I got that is literally listed every single material that I did not need. Selling these items will get me the Rahil coins, so many different things that you can sell that you might not think would sell. However, the exchange center is not just server wide. The exchange center is to all of the servers. So the likelihood of someone buying yours is extremely high because the majority of people that spend in this game are too lazy to farm it, especially people going for master. Congrats, Brad, on master, by the way. Now you could stockpile your Rahil coins and buy upgrades for equipment, or specifically buy materials that you need for crafting your professions. However, you can also sell your Rahi coins. Make sure to max out the unit price so you don't screw yourself. 100,000 Rahi coins will get you roughly 1,260 gems. Because the dang center takes 10%, stupid furball. But once you put Rahil coins on the market, it pretty much immediately sells. Now you can use these crystals for two different things. One, you could do it for dungeon refreshes or repeat quests. Or two, because there's not really a good place to farm mystical scrolls for more summons. And hell, these summons could turn into anything, really. Or just 10 three-star dupes. However, what this does is increases your power level which is what we're all trying to accomplish, right? Oh, look, my right heel's already sold. ka -ching. I'm gonna tell you what I've seen is the best things to sell on the Exchange Center. So that really you can just farm these specific things, but you can go down the list and see for yourself what sells. Sky Stones are a huge seller. If you don't need your Sky Stones, I think if you don't need any upgrades to your items or gear or runes or whatever, you could sell your Sky Stones for a nice profit. Eagle Rays are really good to sell as well, and you AFK farm it, and it's required in some crafting. Topaz and Cold Cobalt ore, and really all ore in general, except for like the really generic ones. They are also in high demand. Magic cores are in a huge demand as well. The faint magic cores and the regular magic cores are really good sellers right now. I honestly would sit on legendary magic core right now. A lot of people don't need them. They're not even to that point in crafting where you would need them to craft something. So they're really, really cheap right now. Yarn is also a huge seller. Really anything that is a leaf or a branch or a trunk or a twig really all fish you'd be surprised on fish you might not get a good big profit from it but they do sell all these things can get you a profit in rahia coins so that you can determine what you want to do with these extra crystals but i think the free to play way to farm mystical summons in this game is farming the exchange center last but not least outfit crafting if you're really looking for something to 
do. This not only increases your power level, these makes your monsters stronger, makes your summoners stronger, and look how cool your summoner can be now. Especially all the side stuff, you know? All the nice features. And that's it for today's video. This is just something that I wanted to talk about today because a lot of people talk and chat like they're bored or something or don't know what to do, there's nothing to do, whatever. There is a ton to do. I mean, if you're that bored, yeah, you can make a second account too, but one account is plenty. If you like this video and like all my content, sub, like, ding, ding, bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.